Hey guys, into the end here. I would like to do something a little different today. Um, I'm going to make a series of guide videos on how to build better decks. Um, so what I'm about to tell you in this video is not unique and not new. Um, these ideas and concepts have existed for longer than a decade, I'm sure, from professional magic players. Deck construction concepts um, are are very similar in all collectible card games. Uh, the details and the card mechanics and the keywords may, may vary from game to game, but the underlying fundamentals are never too far apart. I'm going to break this guide down into three sections, each covering one major topic. My goal is to make it informative to new and veteran players alike. Okay. So the three major sections will be uh, number one, the game plan, number two, the mechanics and techniques of deck construction, and three, a quality testing. Every deck starts with a good game plan. If you cannot articulate your game plan clearly and concisely, then you're not making a deck. You're simply smashing a bunch of cards together. It is the game plan that drives your deck selection, your card selection, and your decision making while you play the deck. This is a mistake I see a lot of new players make when they construct new decks and brew. They focus very heavily on the interaction between specific cards, often very gimmicky, and you end up with a collection of micro-interactions, which is good enough for a draft deck, but not good enough for a competitive, constructed deck. The second topic is the mechanics of deck building. Things such as card selection, card evaluation, consistency, um, efficiency, flexibility versus raw power, uh, your curve, your power base, redundancy. These are some of the uh, things that we'll look into in the second part of these videos. Um, section 1 is a lot more conceptual and theoretical. Section 2 is a lot more technical, which I think are the two key aspects of deck creation. You need to be good at both of these things to be a good deck builder, but also to be a good uh, competitive player, in my opinion. Interesting enough, the better you are at these two things that makes you a better constructed player, you're also going to be better at drafting as well. Finally, the third section is more of a quality check. Uh, once you have come up with a good game plan, you come up with a good first draft of your deck, play tested a few games, um, I have some questions you can look at and ask yourself to consider um, and evaluate your deck and, and, and decide whether or not this is something you want to bring to a tournament. So let's start the first section. Every deck starts with a game plan. It is one or two sentences that concisely describes how your deck plans to win the game. Not only do you want to know what the game plan is, but you also need to know how you will achieve it and when you will achieve it. Typically speaking, all game plans will fall into one of three categories on a spectrum of how fast it is. You have your early game decks, your mid game decks, and your late game decks. Every single deck falls in that spectrum somewhere. Within this timing window, you can then further break your um, deck down into archetypes such as beatdown, combo, control, um, and then you know subtypes like aggro control or control aggro or tempo control or aggro tempo, those kind of things. But I'm going to, to avoid all that mess and focus primarily on beatdown and control. I'm going to exclude combo for the time being because I don't think there are that many real combo decks in Eternal. I will add that section later if it becomes necessary. Knowing what your deck does, how it does it, and when it does it um, will help you with your curve and your card selection later on. Now at its core, a beatdown game plan focuses primarily on deploying threats and applying pressure, the, as opposed to control game plans that focuses primarily on deploying answers. If you find yourself to be someone who is losing a game and, and decides that, hey, I think I need to add more units to kill them faster, you're likely an aggressive beatdown player at heart. If you're someone who loses a game and then asks yourself and say, hey, maybe I should add in more removal spell, maybe I should add in a harsh rule, maybe I should add in more answers um, for that thread that my opponent played that beat me, then you are a control player at heart. This is important to know about yourself because it will lead you towards the kind of deck that you want to play. Um, I've seen a lot of new players add specific 
answers in their aggressive decks, which is typically not what you want to do. I had a friend that main decked um, the card Ruin in his Stone Scar aggro deck because he wanted a way to stop obelisks and hammer of might and, and relic weapons. Well, the more answers like these you add to your deck, the more you risk diluting your game plan and reducing its consistency. Sure enough, you will win some games that you would have otherwise lost because of these very narrow, powerful answers like Ruin uh, in your aggressive deck, but I think on the long run, you are going to end up losing more games on average. So, um, I've been staring at the screen for a while, so let's jump into the decks. Oh, by the way, um, this is my profile. Uh, into the end plus two six zero zero. Please add me to the game, uh, to to your friends list if you like to talk about deck construction and game theory, um, and if you just want to be friends and chat. Please add me to the game. Um, I am currently ranked um, masters in, in in ranked play, and I have not done a lot of drafts, so I'm still just at gold at the moment. So let's take a look at my decks. Um, I'm gonna use some decks that I've played. In the past two months uh, to explain the beatdown game plans. Uh, when I first started playing, this was one of the cheapest decks to make, so I used uh, a burn deck to climb into um, Diamond 2 or Diamond 3, I believe. And this is a very typical um, burn deck. And if I was to put the game plan in one sentence, I would say this deck's game plan is to deal as much damage as possible to my opponent in the early game so that I can finish them off with direct damage in the mid game when my opponent has put enough uh, defensive uh, units onto the board so that my early game units are no longer effective. And this is a very simple and very effective game plan. And um, as you can see, this deck is full of expensive burn spells that does a lot of damage per card. Um, four flame blasts, four flash fire, four obliterates, and it just runs uh, a small number. In fact, only 19 units, all of which are one to two to play, with the exception of this charge unit that's three to play, simply due to its high damage potential. Um, and all the other cards in it are just ways to sort of help you push damage through. Piercing shot is a great aggressive card if you have a aggressive linear sort of all-in strategy like this one. You can potentially remove their uh, blocker due to damage, allow you to hit your opponent for two more. Um, every points of damage here and there adds up. Uh, all you need to do is do 25 damage to win the game. Okay. Uh, so when I hit Diamond 2 or so, um, I switched to a much more consistent version of uh, an aggressive deck, which is basically just Stone Scar mid-range, which I call Fires and Demons, because that's all this is in that's all the stuff in the deck, really. Um, this game plan is a little bit different. Uh, it's to use highly cost-efficient threads to overwhelm my opponent's defenses through temple advantages. And what that really means is all my threads that I use are pretty big for its mana cost. Argent Port Instigator is a 3-3 for 2 power, which is one of the best aggressive units in the game. Um, Champion of Chaos is is unparalleled in its ability to do damage uh, once you hit its power and influence requirements. It doesn't matter what your opponent blocks with, it doesn't matter how big the creatures are, you're going to kill it and you're going to overwhelm the rest of the damage to your opponent. This is an extremely reliable source of damage in the late game regardless of your opponent, regardless of what your opponent has on the board. Impending Doom, 4 power for a 5 5 flyer, it's evasive, it's large, um, it's highly efficient. Uh, for its mana cost. So these are the kind of units that I focus on um, and this is the reason why the game has this deck has a little bit more late game staying power and the, and the deck also runs uh, a number of temple um, focused uh, answers or not answers but temple focused threats because these are both answers and threats. It has that flexibility. Um, playing a rapid strike with two mana allows you to Pack into a sandstorm titan with your Recano outlaw, killing the sandstorm titan with effectively two power. Um, Annihilate does the same thing: two power to trade for their four power unit, giving you a significant swing in tempo advantage. Uh, Suffocate is the same reason, 
for one power you could kill something that cost your opponent four or five power to cast like for example uh, steward of the pass or maybe Serath at three power every time you play a, a spell like this you gain some temple advantage which allows you to then spend the rest of your turn deploying more threads onto the table and, and this is how you build up incremental temple advantage over time to the point that you're able to overwhelm your opponent and this is why decks like this does not have that many late game burn spells even though they're very good okay. and then once I was in masters I, I needed gold uh, when I in the first month that I played so I built a stone scar token deck to grind um, gauntlets this deck has a different game plan than both of the other two decks this one is to uh, flood the board with low cost units and get past blockers by going around them um, and then to overwhelm the opponent uh, before they're able to stabilize. And for that reason, you don't see any burn spells in the top end. Um, you don't see uh, too, too many uh, cards other than units and then ways to mass pump your units. Uh, and this, is, they, this game plan is also called going wide. You're not confronting your opponent in any way. You're just going to go around all of his units by suiciding your smaller units into them and then allowing your units to do a lot of damage and hopefully you're able to kill your opponent before he can stabilize. This is a, a very all-in strategy with not a lot of eight, uh, mid to late game backup plans. So as you can see, three, um, three equally, I would say, aggressive uh, uh, decks but drastically different game plans which led to a very different card selection as well. The reason why we want a clear game plan is because it is impossible for a deck to do everything. So you must make trade-offs. If you're going to load your deck up with Flame Blast, then you're not going to have a lot of room for, say, Finest Hours or Rapid Shots. If you are going to load your deck up um, with cost-efficient threads to try and win through Temple, you're not going to be using Death Strike in your deck. Um, I have uh, set aside Rakano Plate as my um, example for what an amazing game plan is. Now, I know that I said that you should always start your deck creation with a game plan, but then not all game plans are created equal. Some game plans are simply better than others. Um, Rakano Plate is an example of simply a superior game plan. This is one of the best aggressive decks in the game. and if not the best. It has consistently finished um, very highly in tournaments and it has been uh, pretty much sitting on the throne of aggro decks for a se uh, several months. The game plan of Arcano Plate is a work of beauty. It is a linear aggressive strategy that looks to develop the board early and apply threads with highly efficient early game threads. However, these threads based on that this deck grows as you move into the mid game and late game with Warcry triggers and uh, powerful weapons allowing you to turn your early game units into very effective and powerful mid game units which then build the momentum through Warcry triggers to go into the late game and allowing your early game units that are 2-1 to effectively compete and brawl with very strong late game units that your opponent is able to put up. So this game is very strong in the early, mid, and late games uh, stages of the game, making this one of the most unique aggressive decks because every other early game aggressive deck will start to lose steam when you get to the mid game. Okay, Moving on to the control decks, um, I don't have any control decks built, uh, but broadly speaking, here are some uh, common control deck game plans. One example would be to use cheap, efficient answers to one for one my opponent's uh, threats, and then when both players have exhausted their resources, use powerful spells to replenish my own resources, or simply use my very powerful game ending threads that are difficult to answer to finish the game quickly. A typical deck that would fall into that kind of a game plan would be your, your Justice, Mono Justice control decks, or maybe your Felm control decks. Both of these uh, decks uses a lot of removal spells to trade with your opponents 
and then they um, with the blue versions of decks you can either replenish using channel of the tempest or with um, film you just deploy very powerful game ending threats like champion of cunning um, to finish the game very quickly another example of a control strategy would be to say um, use powerful defensive value based units to stall out the board and neutralize my opponent's threads and then win through slow attrition and incremental card advantage. Uh, the perfect example of this kind of a game plan would be Chalice Control decks. And then finally, you have another type of a late game plan uh, for um, searching and assembling uh, card A and card B as quickly as possible to build a very powerful effect or an engine that will allow you to overpower any kind of game plan that your opponent can put up. An example of a deck like this would be a Clock Roach deck. All of the game plans that I've just discussed, um, you know, when, when you've played enough collectible card games, you'll find that these archetypes and game plans are pretty much universal in all the games. And how good each game plan really is sort of just depends on what cards are available to choose from. The decks with the strongest mix of enablers, payoff cards, redundancy will usually come up on top. Now, one very important thing to note in all of these game plans that I've mentioned is that they all respect their opponents. Every one of those game plans assumes that your opponent will be doing something to disrupt you. And all of these game plans have ways to get around your opponent's disruption and defenses. Eternal is a two-player game, so your, player, so your game plan um, must be interactive. Okay, I'm going to end this video, but in conclusion, uh, I just want to reiterate that your game plan is the very core of your deck design. It is the singular focus that binds together a collection of cards to form what we've called a cohesive deck. It guides us in the way we build our deck and also the way we play it. When we get into the next section of deck building mechanics, we get to see how our choices and game plan in this section translates into our deck building card selection choices. Um, thank you very much for watching my video. If you're interested in any of the things that I say, please add me online, a comment on my Facebook uh, channel, or if you're interested in, in reading the rest of the guides that I've created, I have some written versions of these guides on Reddit. If you're interested in any of these things, um, just comment, contact me, um, and uh, I look forward to, uh, to making more videos for you.